morning and welcome to Are You Up Babes. I'm so glad that you've joined me this morning and I pray that as we look at the word together we would be encouraged in our walk and in our faith as we walk on this earth, as we do life together as these times are very challenging. My prayer is that together we would be encouraged to continue and fight the good fight of faith. I'm not a runner. I've never been an athlete, but I can remember at school always being really interested in watching the relay races. It's a race where it's a team of four people and the first person passes the baton onto the second person. The second person takes it, it's exchanged. They run pass that baton on to the third person. The third person runs, passes it on to the fourth person, and the fourth person runs to the finish line. The very important part is the way that they exchange that baton so that the baton doesn't fall, and now they waste seconds trying to pick up this baton that has fallen before they can continue the race. It is also important that the outgoing runner, the runner that is about to pass the baton on, they are the outgoing runner, that they can achieve their maximum acceleration at baton exchange. So they are running their race and achieve their maximum acceleration as they pass that baton over, as it is exchanged and the second person begins to run their race. The Bible is all about us running our race and fulfilling our purpose and passing that baton on effectively. It's important that the outgoing runner has achieved maximum acceleration and effectively passes that baton on to the next generation, to the next runner. We see this in all of the lineages of the Bible. Adam passed the baton on to his sons. Abraham passed the baton on to Isaac. Isaac passed it on to Jacob, Jacob passed it on to all of his sons. We see this with all of the kings, some who were good, who passed the baton on to their son, and some who were bad, evil kings, who passed the baton on. You know, sometimes there was a good king, and for some reason that baton was dropped as it was passed on to the next son, and all that that king had achieved was lost in the next generation. Now, We look at Moses, who was a mighty man of God, and he had an extremely loyal assistant whose name was Joshua. Moses had sons, and yet the baton was not passed on to them. The Bible does not tell us why the baton was not passed on to them, but the Bible does tell us about Joshua, who was always by Moses' side. In fact, in Exodus chapter 24, It actually tells us how God called Moses up onto the mountain. It was here on the mountain that Moses was gone for 40 days where God passed on to him all the detailed instructions as well as the two tablets which were inscribed with the terms of the covenant. Then God sees that the people have gone off track while Moses is on this mountain with God. The people have melted gold and created an idol, a gold calf, that they are now worshipping. And God says to Moses, the people have gone off track. And Moses makes his way down the mountain. But if you read that chapter, Joshua is with Moses. Joshua actually says, I hear the people, it sounds like they're screaming. And so Joshua remained with Moses. He was a faithful man. He was faithful. He was loyal. Why? Joshua had a relationship with God. And so the baton was passed effectively from Moses to Joshua. Now, if you look at the books, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, it's all about Moses. And it's about saving the people, about teaching them how to serve a holy God, about teaching them how to remain apart, to set themselves apart from the pagan nations and their pagan worship. It was about teaching them how to rule and how 
to walk in the covenant that God had gave them. Why did he want them to walk in covenant? Because in covenant was blessing and protection. This is the baton for us. It is actually a picture of what we should be doing. Saving people. How does that look? Well, people don't always know how to negotiate life. People can have a wobble in their marriage. And they just need someone to tell them how to restore what they have lost. People can have a wobble with a difficult child, with a rebellious teenager, with adult children who've taken the wrong path. And they just need someone who will encourage them, who will pray for them, who will pray with them for their children. And where there's influence to sit down with their children. People are battling with fear. People are battling with hopelessness. People are battling with grief and with sickness. People are battling with loss of income and provision. And they just need someone who will check up on them, pray with them, pray for them, encourage them, send them a verse, have communion with them. People are lost, literally lost. And you know, you can be lost and not realize you lost because you've never been found. You don't know what that feels like. But the Bible tells us what that feels like. When we are a child of God, when we are saved, when we have surrendered our life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the Bible tells us that we are filled with peace and with joy. I need you to understand there are people who do not understand what peace and joy look like all day long. I cannot imagine anything more traumatizing than experiencing life all day long with a lack of peace and joy. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, peace and joy flood your heart. Suddenly, you're dealing with your whole life, your whole existence from a perspective of joy and peace. Not from a perspective of trauma, of brokenness, not from a perspective of pain or condemnation, because you have a revelation of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you and its finished work. Talk about the saving grace of God. And we are carriers of that, delivering it to a lost world, if we will. You see, we can choose not to, but if we will, we get to be carriers of that. Then, like Moses, we get to teach people how to serve a holy God. We get to save people in their difficult situation, in their circumstances. And then we get to teach them how to serve a holy God. Jesus did this with his disciples. He discipled them. He disciplined them. People don't like the term, but that's exactly what it is. It's to teach people how to follow God and not to follow the world, not to follow the flesh, but to follow a holy God. We do this with our children because we love them and we want to teach them to become exactly like Jesus. Paul did this with all of the believers. They converted and experienced Jesus and grace and forgiveness and the cross. But now it's to teach them to walk, to live and to remain in the finished work of the cross. You see, when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, we are reborn, we become babies in the faith. Many people can make the mistake at that point of thinking they've arrived, but we are babies in the faith, drinking milk. But as we read the word, as we walk, as we learn to remain in the finished work of the cross, we become mature. So we have to teach people to stay the course and to stay apart from pagan cultures, from worship in the world that is not of God, even from worship of things in the world. And we have to teach them how to not follow the patterns of this world, but to follow Jesus Christ, to surrender and lay ourselves down. 
Obey God and his laws keeps us in covenant. And that's what helps us to walk in blessing and protection. And we need to teach people. And when people begin to grow, they are reading the word. They are learning because they are eating the bread of life. Remember, if we are not eating, we will die. It is the same. If people are reading the word of God, it is the bread of life to them. And then to rule. And I just think the word rule is so messed up in the world because we are so used to seeing so many people in rulership positions who do such an evil job. But, you know, God created us to rule and to rule means to bring justice where people are not oppressed and not destroyed. You see, in many pagan cultures in the Bible, they actually sacrifice their babies to gods. They either did this through literally murdering them, or they sacrifice their babies through fire, like an offering. In today's culture, people have reasons why it is okay in your situation to abort a baby. But a baby is an actual life given by God. Yes, God is not the author of pain. And sometimes a baby can come through an extremely painful situation like a rape and yet you know God has a way of turning what was intended for incredible harm by the devil into the most incredible blessing by God that is the work of God it is unexplainable but it is how God can work if we don't rule and fight to bring justice evil will rule and reign and destroy Moses achieved all of this. He ran full speed. Effectively, he passed that baton on to Joshua. And Joshua did not change anything. You know, he could have stepped in and said, okay, guys, we're going to do it a new way now. Times have changed. It's a new era. He didn't. He actually continued on with the work given to him by Moses, but he continued the work now as the leader. He continued faithfully. He led the people faithfully. He was a mighty warrior. He remained faithful to complete the task that he had started. And he remained faithful to stay in the presence of God. He kept the laws and he continued to teach the people. He was the one who said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want to encourage you that a baton has been passed on to you and to me. Maybe you dropped the baton. Maybe you stopped running. You forgot the reason for the race. Maybe you got hurt. And being hurt, you stopped running altogether. But I want to encourage you that if you will focus on God and start running again, you will finish the race and he will allow you to pass that baton on to other people. I want to close up with some verses about running. Hebrews 12 verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. You know, we're running a race. Let sin not stop us. But there are a cloud of witnesses when we lose loved ones and we are experiencing that on such a a degree at the moment across the earth you see people who are grieving who've lost loved ones don't let that stop you from running the race but actually see those loved ones as a cloud of witnesses cheering us on let us not get entangled in sin but run to finish that race 2 timothy chapter 4 verse 7 says i have fought the good fight i have finished the race i have kept the faith. Let us fight the good fight of faith and let us finish the race. Galatians chapter 5 verse 7 says, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? And this is just such a great verse of encouragement and perhaps if we have stopped running the race of rebuke and you know A parent rebukes a child because a parent loves their child. They want the child to be like Jesus. And they know that if they just leave the child to their own devices, a child will become a horrible, sinful 
possibly evil adult. We need to allow ourselves even to be rebuked. And yeah, the word is saying you were running a good race. You were doing a good job. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? Let us make sure nothing cuts in on us that we stop running the race. We have to keep our eyes focused on God and on the end goal, on that finish line. Habakkuk 2 verse 2 says, Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. You see, that's what it's about, that we run the race, but that we pass the baton on, that others may run with it, that they see the vision, that they have it in their hearts. And Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Our hope is not in our bank account. Our hope is not in people. Our hope is not in institutions. Our hope is not in staying well. Our hope is in the Lord. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And so perhaps in closing, this is a great verse, James 1.12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And so at the end of the race, we want to run that race well because we will receive a crown of life. And we will have victory, which Jesus accomplished for us at the cross. It was the finished work if we will walk in it, live in it, and remain in it. And so I hope you were encouraged by the message today. You know, God has given us this race to run. Let us run it well. And let us pass that baton so effectively to all the people that we know in our lives that they can run their race well. Come, let us pray together. Father, we come to you, Lord, and thank you and praise you for your word, which is bread to us. It is life to us and for encouraging us, Father God. I pray that we would run this race effectively to save people's lives, that we would give advice from your word that would would save their marriages, their children, their hopeless situations, that they would experience miracles as we pray together, Father God. I pray, Lord Jesus, we would bring people to come to know you as Lord and Savior, that those who are lost would be found. And I pray, Father God, you would help us to rule and bring justice onto an evil world, Father. I pray, Lord, that those who experience injustice would experience your love and that we would be able to bring justice onto this earth so that evil will not rule, evil will not reign, and evil will not destroy. I pray, Father God, we would stay within your covenant, that we would walk in blessing and protection. And I pray, Father God, you would help us to not grow weary, but to run this race, to not get stuck in trials, to not get stuck in any place of grief, but Father, to run the race knowing that you are with us, you will help us. I pray, Father, we would not allow sin to entangle us, nothing to stop us, but to run effectively that we would focus on heaven. We would focus on you and the finished line. And I pray, Father, when we end, we would hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. Father, bless us as we run this race and bless us as we pass that baton on to others, that it would be a greater blessing in their lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage you. What you're doing is not for nothing. Do not get disheartened by the difficulties of life. Run your race and run it well. There is a finish line and there is a reward at the finish line. God bless.